So here we are. Got Dave shoveling the path to the end of the extension cord. Hey Dave! <laughs> you getting to the end of that cord? Yeah. Great. I can hook up that generator. We'll get some lights going on inside of the cabin. That's uh you see it's a fair bit of snow we have to go through. Dave is Gone ahead and shovel us some nice paths. She's really snowed in here. Good for the snow, I'd say. Stove is going. Let's unload stuff in the truck and we'll get things started here. Well, I didn't lie when I said it. You want to go on an adventure, eh? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. This is proof to my wife that yes, I can cook if I have to. That lazy guy just sitting there waiting <laughs> Wait, for his breakfast oh, my stomach to come. Is, my stomach is growling. Yeah. He doesn't know he's going to be washing dishes after this. <laughs> so, That's a fair rule. Yeah. <laughs> but yeah, it's coming along good. Yum yum. And not only that, making toast too. Hello folks, this is the Way to Native Chronicles again. We're just actually heading out of the trap line right now. When we came in there was a foot of snow on unplowed, uh, you know, very basic roads, logging road with no gravel on it. So we uh, kind of scratched our heads for a little while. It was quite a ways in, a good kilometer uh, through this deep snow that's never been driven over. So we came in and uh, we made it. It's a little bit more uphill going back though. So uh, uh, I'm pretty confident that we can get our way out. But what I'm going to do now is uh, we've got everything packed in the truck, we're ready to leave here and uh, we're going to see if we can make it out of this place because if we don't, there's nobody around for a long ways. We'll give her a shot here, catch you at the main road, hopefully. Folks, here we go. I don't know. I'm going to back up a little bit. I think I've got to get on the track that I came in on because it's pushing the snow here. side and the other I have to let off. But I think we can do it. I think I have the traction to do it. Very intense. Okay, here I'm going pretty good. The one part with a little side mode there is kind of tricky.
One of the ways to go. Yeah, I can see if you haven't been high bottom in here. But the truck likes to skid sideways a lot. Well, the problem is I was going a little crooked coming in too, so that doesn't help. When I hit the same crooked tracks. <laughs> Get out! <laughs> it veers the truck all over the place. So the front end, the front wheels, kind of dig in, and the ass end comes swinging around. Now a bit of a hill here. Let's see if we can get up this thing. We got to get it. on the truck, four wheel drive, let's go baby. Uh, I think if I left the old tires on, I don't know if I would have made it up here. Well, I still don't know if I'm going to make it out here because we're not out here yet. Because those guys, they're burning the brush piles. I think, well, they're not on our trap line, so maybe not. <laughs> One thing about it, it's pretty simple here at least. We can make it right to the graded part of the road. It would be at least a long way. We're almost out. We're almost out. I'm not coming back in here again. It's a good thing we packed everything. <laughs> We did it! <laughs> we did it! Man, oh man! Look at that, eh? Now these guys are burning brush piles. Not quite well. I don't think these are on our trap line. Our trap line starts just behind us. But we're hoping to get the contract for burning the piles on our land. So. Well, Dave, what do you think? We should have. We shouldn't go back in there, should we, eh? No. No. So what we did is we planned to come here for three days and uh, now we're on the graded road so everything's cool. But uh, we can't plan to come for three days. We came yesterday and we got to this point. Actually, let's just take a walk outside and show you what we decided to dive into here. Okay, so we got fresh piles burning all around us here. Uh, they weren't burning when we came in yesterday. But what we did, we came up this this plowed road here. And, uh, so I walked up there for a little bit. And kinda, it was a hard decision actually to make because once you go in there, we got to go a kilometer in to get to the cabin. And. Uh, wasn't sure. And it's a little bit downhill here towards the cabin, so coming back is a bit uphill. And we thought, well, we traveled six hours to get here. Let's give her a shot. I got a power winch, a gas powered winch with me, and some other equipment, but as you can see, it's kind of barren landscape because of the logging that's gone on. There's not much to hook a, a winch onto, so that's one of the 
things you have to take into consideration too. And we are way out far away from people. Uh, actually, maybe not so far now that uh, I see there's some brush uh, burning crews out here, but they may not be coming back for, for a few days. So at the time, this is just totally vacant. stuck then the answer is are you too stupid so if you make if it succeeds you're if it doesn't succeed then you're too stupid and it's your own fault you got stuck in the middle of nowhere but if you turn around and drive back then you're kicking yourself in the ass the whole way back you have a little bit more guts you know like, this is kind of on the on the limit the edge of what the truck can do it's an old 94 suburban I uh, did the best I could to prepare by having the tires on it. Look at those fires, eh? That's what we might be doing a little bit later on. So next time we come in here, it'll be on a skidoo, with a skidoo. I'm not gonna try that, that road again with the truck. But you know, last year we came in here with the truck all the way through in there in January. And it was uh, uh, not, uh, not even half as much snow. We drove in no problem at all. And that's on pretty well ball tires too. <laughs> so uh, uh, had a little bit of experience with the snow on that road. But the snow gets too deep. I don't think we're really high bottoming anywhere. Just just had enough clearance so we wouldn't do that. And the snow was pretty fresh soft too which is also uh helps a little bit four of those in the basic bush pile on the upwind side of it and light them up and that'll get her going. Some people use uh, tiger torches but I heard that might be a good way to do it. So we're now at the main road. I'm gonna get some seat belt on here. 
Let's see how it goes. <coughs> got lots of lots of lots of uh, film. <laughs> the thing is, you can cut parts out and add back in later too, so you can just film the machine. Maybe while you're filming, you know, you might see a fox or a coyote too, eh? Or a moose. truck out that road see if we can make it out and how hard it is to, to get to the, the plow portion of the road and uh, and then get to get our firewood if we make it out then we get our firewood but then you kind of are committed to coming back again on that, that same snowed in road so we thought well if it's really easy getting out and in then then we can we can do that, you know. But what if it's really hard, very if such a goal getting out, uh, where you could conceive uh, sliding into the ditch very easily if you don't quite get that line right on the truck, you know. Then you will be uh, a kilometer away through deep snow away from the cabin, and you still got to go to the cabin and lock things up and get everything all all uh, prepared eh, for next time you get there. And, uh, you know, then you'll be wishing that you had brought all your stuff. So, kind of decide to sit, take it on the conservative side and really when you're in the outdoors and in remote regions, that's what you have to do is you have to play it on the conservative side. And say, what is the worst case scenario? What if this happens? Then what are, have you done, got any plan to deal with that. And our plan to deal with that was if we can just barely get out, then we better uh, just keep on going and go uh, all the way back home. So 
in order to do that, without having to walk back to the cabin, get everything all closed up on the cabin, and get the generator in there and stuff like that, get her locked up and uh, taken care of so that uh, it's good for the next time we come out, which will probably be, be with Skidoo's. <laughs> I'm with a stupid truck again. And uh, as it turned out, that was that was the way to go, is to take it on the, on the cautious side, right? Just in case things don't go right, because you might do things 50 times or 100 times and always get away with it. But when you're out in a remote area, it just takes that one time, and that could be uh, the end of it for you. It comes right down to it. Or if not the end of you, you know, it's uh, going to be a pretty, pretty wretched experience. And of course, we're not young anymore. Especially Dave. <laughs> so, uh, I think you did the right thing, eh, Dave? Take yeah, her, for take sure. Take your stuff, pack it in, get her going. Looks like uh, they sent this road a little bit now. So, we're traveling pretty easy to come back. I'm going to catch Gladys by surprise when we get home. <laughs> <laughs> We'll see what she's really up to. <laughs> There's a lot of stories of guys working up north <laughs> when they come home and they come home thinking they're going to be a surprise. And yeah, yeah. Yeah, <laughs> it's a big surprise. <laughs> the one that you probably oh, wish yeah. you... Oh <laughs> yeah, surprise all right. <laughs> yeah, not the surprise you were looking for. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Not that I worry even a little bit about Gladys, but no. it's funny. I don't think so. I think you're fine. <laughs> I just like to see the look on her face. She'll be happier. Maybe she'll be upset because she doesn't have supper ready. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, she's going to be uh, uh, questioning me on everything that I left behind. That's why I made sure to pack, give, hand you the, the canister of coffee oh. and the sugar containers. We should, have filmed, we should have filmed the cabin when we left it as you were locking it. Actually, yeah. You had video proof. <laughs> video proof, look, don't sure just, I'm not proof. just saying, no, we did leave it good. Yeah. <laughs> There's a lot of stuff in that cabin now, eh? Yeah. Oh yeah, that's true. It's, uh, and that, that's just a lot of stuff that we can have to break again. Yeah. So we can, next time we go up there, we can travel pretty light. But you know, it would actually be really nice going in there with the scooter. On that soft powdery snow, mm -hmm. you go all over the place. Chains on it would be fine. Yeah, but you okay. still might hide bottom? I don't know. Maybe, eh? I don't know if it has a clearance for it. I don't think it does. Well, you'd be plowing with your undercarriage. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, that's true. It does have a good rippy tires on it. I don't they're not that big for snow. Some people can get the full, you can get the full tracks of what they're down there. A little bit. Because I'm over top of that. Yeah, Spile's only window. been on half. I'm on the wrong side of the window. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, they're big. Sometimes when you hit the brake and the gas because your boots are big, yeah. that's not such a... <laughs> then you go, well, this is dumb. Yeah. <laughs> These boots are dumb. Either the boots are dumb or the or the pedals are dumb the way they made them. They didn't make them for... They yeah, didn't make them for full-size winter boots. <laughs> yeah. But, yeah, it's got to be careful driving down these roads too. Eh? Nope. Just start here. 
know. Oh, okay. This so is where he started. This part here hasn't been done yet. This is when we were coming in too. It was a pretty narrow track. Yeah. It was indeed. There was a there was a few places where we had to both had to head to the head to the side, put one yeah. wheel in the snow. Yeah. Yeah. Then you want to slow down. Okay. Why do I got a red light instead of a green light now? Oh, no, the red light is recorded. Oh, okay, good. Well, you've had red light on all yeah. the time, haven't you? Yeah, yeah. ticker is going round and round, so it's recording oh, yeah. something, so. Yeah, and it's in the color, right? <laughs> yeah. One of some of those side buttons on that camera, or for switching it to the night vision mode, oh. where everything goes uh, black and white. Yeah, no, I didn't do anything like that, I don't think. So you got to taste my uh, camp cooking this morning? Got to see a little bit. It was a fine meal. Yeah, it turned out good, eh? Toasted, toasted bacon and eggs. Bacon and eggs, and the eggs didn't look like they came from the store either. Look at their farmer's market eggs yeah, at least. Very, uh, dark colored, you would say. Yeah. Yeah, they taste about a hundred times better than those pale yolks. mentioning to you before when I said like when you're talking about I said well you're a, a, a heavy equipment operator but I but I know that people there's a skill to that grade what yeah. blade you got at and speed and stuff to, so yeah. you don't so you don't skip over and make make a washboard road. Yeah. I've never run greater myself so I don't know for sure but I think that's what happens. I've never run either but I just heard people talking. Yeah. <laughs> But it's that vibration exactly. going in it. Yeah. That oscillation, it's a feedback loop, eh? Yeah. <clears throat> Same thing when you run a cab. That's what happens when the greater operator is paid by the kilometer. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, they just say, you better get this boat done. <laughs> We're coming to pick you up at six. You better be yeah, here. Better be, <laughs> better be here and be done. Yeah, could be. <laughs> hey, what's this on the road up ahead? Yeah, what do we got? There, eh? I think it's a raven. Oh, yeah. yeah. It's a big raven, Just a big old bird. <laughs> yeah, it'd be nice if you saw something. Yeah, so. so
yourself and your buddy. <laughs> you know, I've got a satellite uh, satellite phone for real emergencies, but you know, basically when you get stuck in a situation like that, uh, it can be uh, a whole day's work. Sometimes you work for hours and hours just to get 10 feet. And that can be really discouraging. It's, it's hard on uh, during a very bad situation. So, so you, you want to avoid that if you can. And that was always kind of on my mind while we were there. Eh? Just touch and go whether we can get out. So rather than worry about it for another day, I thought let's just give her a shot. Maybe we come out really easy. We go up and get some bunch of uh, firewood. And uh, it was so easy getting out, just say, yeah, we'll just drive back and get in and out just like nothing. But with it being uphill, you don't know until you try. And it was actually harder coming out, I think. But when I came in, I wasn't going squirrely all over the place, eh? I mean, it's, it's a little bit because I'm getting caught in the tracks, but I think it does, that little bit of an uphill slope makes a difference on whether you can keep going or whether the slow is snow load in front of you slows you down until your tires lose traction. We were kind of on that knife edge of traction. That's probably the best way to describe it. Eh? There's that certain point where you got so much traction and you got so much force of the snow against you on the tires. And, uh, if you're going downhill, you make it, but if you're going uphill, just that little bit of a change, and now it's not good enough anymore. And now you, then you spin out on an up, going up a hill, and you couldn't get up that hill while you were moving, so now you've got to get up that hill from a standing stop. <laughs> not very good. I don't think it was a type of road uh, that we would have dug down, though. Because it was uh, a solid road underneath there, and uh, I don't think it's like layers of built-up snow. We were, our wheels are pretty well on the on the road, not exactly on it, but I don't think we dig down very deep. But that's a good thing. Because once you start digging down, then you gotta that's that's uh, now you gotta climb out of a hole that your tires have dug for you. Used to ran heavy equipment for 13 years, mostly motor scrapers, some cat. So we uh, had lots of opportunities to get stuck and get pulled out, get chewed out by the foreman. And you can see how some guys get stuck lots going to one spot, and other guys they never get stuck, and they know something that the other guys don't know. How much, how much to do with one thing or another. Or they know ahead of time when they look at a certain section they, they know they're going to get stuck and they just don't go. And that's a lot of it with uh, not taking and uh, you know, in the bush. A lot of it is judgment about what you can do and what you can't do when you should stop and say no we're not going any further because what I see up ahead is going to be nothing but trouble and that's again using a cushion of conservatism on the, on the calls like that because you might you might make it through 10 times the 11th time you don't so you're always kind of hedging your bets I guess that's the way to look at it it's hedging your bets I have to say that Gladys and I have never really been that stuck. We've traveled a lot of a lot of uh, pretty ugly roads in the past. But there's a lot of roads that I stopped and said, no, we're not going any further down this road, we'll turn around and go back. It's just not worth it. It's kinda like the old saying that everybody's heard, I'm sure that four-wheel drive just lets you get stuck in more inaccessible places. <laughs> the key ingredient is still judgment. On a road like this, you need a good truck. Like this is rough here. Rattle a little far all the bits. This truck
brought here a 1994 Suburban and it's got 376,000 kilometers on it right now. It's still running good, just like a tank. Not to say that it doesn't need repairs once in a while, because you know that's what you're going to have. But you cannot keep it. It's a pretty solid vehicle. And it's getting us home, so I'm not going to complain. We bought it for only a thousand dollars. Then after, right after buying it for a thousand dollars, I see to spend another $2,000 to get it in good shape. Two and a half thousand, I think. But we've had this truck now for, what? Maybe close to 10 years, seven years? Something like that. Been driving it for quite a while. And the uh, reason I like the Suburban is the, uh, is you can carry a whole lot of crap in there, in the back. Keep it out of the out of the weather. So, you can't load a quad into the back lift like you can with the pickup. That's a downside. So you have to you have to pull a trailer if you use the vehicle like this. But really, for hauling a lot of hunting and trapping gear, Suburban is not a bad way to go. Not only for hauling stuff, but uh, also for sleeping in it. Slept, use this truck a lot for sleeping. You just put down the back seats and you got a great big area. You spread out your, your sleeping mat and sleeping bags and uh, you don't have to set up the tents. Just, just put out the campfire, walk out to the truck, crawl in and, and you can sleep right now. Which is something you can't do with this uh, regular pickup, right?
with that bear door on the way. Am I riding on the wind roll again? <laughs> yes, the bear door would be a, would have been a really good a good idea to get that in there. Yeah. The sooner the better, the more the sooner it is, the better. Yeah, for before sure. the bears come over the screen. Yeah. So we still got time, of course, but uh, still. And it's, it really doesn't take long to do that. But I've got the piece of plywood sitting on the inside of the cabin right now. And uh, I've got a whole bucket full of uh, wood screws, three and a half inch wood screws. Yeah. And uh, for this drill, just run those, cut the board to the both the dimensions of the door. And maybe put a couple of nails in so you can kind of fasten it to the door. And have all those spikes pointing outwards. And then there's going to mess with that board. was there's considerable overlap between the intelligence of a bear and the dumbest tourist. <laughs> <laughs> so they couldn't make that trap. They could make a better a better garbage disposal. Yeah. But they figured there would be too many people who wouldn't know how to get in it either. <laughs> even with even with instructions and, and illustrated instructions. Yeah, even with writing right? on it. They have yeah. not only in words but they also put a, a picture picture instructions, right? Yeah, for yeah, people picture. that don't have English, right? Yeah. Still figured, nah. Put your hand here. <laughs> Turn this way. Yeah. There'd be too many people who just leave her. <laughs> they get frustrated and leave their garbage outside the bin anyway that way. So, yeah. <laughs> so it's a fine line, right? There's too much, like I said, too much overlap between <laughs> the smart bear and the average tourist or the dumb tourist, so. <laughs> Software engineering too. The user will always find a way to outdumb you. As easy and clear as you can make something, it will find a way to screw it up. Because <laughs> you you start off with your knowledge, and you just it's hard for you to imagine what what it is for people who don't know something. Eh? The instructions are always tricky to write. Yeah. For sure. If you have to write a manual or something on how to do something. I had to do that when I worked at Quality Control for uh, for Garneau Pipe. For, for, for when you're writing procedures for, for oh, things yeah. that have to be followed. Yeah. You have to assume they know nothing. Absolutely. Right? You have to yeah. write from this. Well, that, that's this. why you actually, once you're all done trying to do your best, then you have to hand it to somebody. Who right. To get them to, okay, can you do that? You do this now. <laughs> Oh, for sure, and then you can see where you gotta where the where the deficiencies are and, where and re -re reword something or whatever. Or yeah, make it more clear. Yeah, it's tricky because because of course when you're making it, it's very clear to you. You know exactly what you're talking about. Yeah, but to have somebody that doesn't know understand as well. You don't want to go too far on being too overly uh, <laughs> detailed either, eh? Because then you've got a 200-page booklet. <laughs> You'll lose your audience. Yeah, you're going to have 200 pages. They won't read it at all. It's explain three hours of explanation <laughs> for something that's a six-minute job. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> so you get lots of film here of this, this road. Eh? Thanks to my camera. 
camera, man. settled up here as much because because near Grand Prairie there's all these little towns uh, and some of them are abandoned some of them have hardly any well yeah. many places in Alberta some of them are abandoned they they might have one or two houses people still living there or whatever right yeah. often there's a church and a cemetery in there that's that seems to be preserved people keep that for for posterity well because yeah. they've got relatives there so there's yeah they've relative anyway these these towns are only I think I can't remember if it's seven kilometers or seven miles. Maybe they're they're 15 kilometers or 20 kilometers apart. Because that's how far you could go back in the day on a horse and wagon. Yeah, yeah. So that's all they had. So then there would be another town there, another yeah. small little town, Rycroft. And I can't keep Rycroft, Sexsmith, uh, those places all in there, up in that area. Because when I lived in Spirit River, if you go down on the old highway, I actually had a friend that lived in a town, and he was. He and his family were the only people in the town. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So, 
he, 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 yeah. he uh, cut the grass. He maintained the cemetery because that, and the church yards because that was important to him, right? He yeah. thought that looked really nice because people didn't come off, but when they did come, at least it didn't look like it was yeah. neglected and forgotten. And then he, Nothing whatever. Worse than seeing an overgrown cemetery. Right. So he liked doing it. He did it. Uh, whatever. It was. He lived there. Just him and his family. I mean, they had seven kids. So they yeah. got to be pretty popular. Popular anyway. <laughs> I think we're chipping along late here at the end of this road. It's. Uh, I think it's. Uh, it was originally the native bears up in Fort McMurray when I was at the camp this, this summer. Yeah, yeah. Lots. In fact, one was, because they always have where they were spotted and things like that, right? And and they had one was spotted right outside the main lodge one morning. Like at, I think it was 5 o'clock in the morning they said they'd spotted it. So that's right when people are coming and going too. So that's something else. Right? They had. There was one that was being a really good, he was being really good because they had the they had the people, whoever's in charge of this, of moving the bears around. They had them for three or four days. They had them chasing. We'd see them <laughs> one way or the other way, and the bears just kept kept circling around. Anyway, they what they ended up doing was clearing a whole bunch of brush from around the camp there, where oh. the bear would have been staying and hiding in it. Whatever it was just okay. We'll <laughs> we'll make it so you can't live here. <laughs> so they cut down a whole bunch of trees, a whole bunch of oh, it, just, just cleared it right out. Yeah. yeah, yeah. But for the overflow parking. There was people there, you could go park your vehicle there, and there was whatever, lights, I guess. Every once in a while, uh, some kind of light standard set up, but there was bears out in there, so it was always wary. I was, because of COVID, they, cho they closed down all the all the recreational or the, or the facilities in there, so I couldn't go on the treadmill at night, so I'd go out walking. <laughs> oh, so I was doing that for a bit until someone said, you can't go walking out there. <laughs> There's bears. <laughs> Fast food. Uh, oh. Oh, okay. Find something else to do. I had a can of bear spray in my in my car from or truck from from camping in the summer and and, hike, and hiking. But uh, I wasn't allowed to have that at camp because that would be considered a weapon. So even if it was bear in my spray? even though it was in my vehicle. Have bear yeah. spray? No. no, in my vehicle. I couldn't have it in my vehicle. No. So I had it anyway because I didn't know the rules before I got up there, but then whatever. I just, anyway, so I couldn't be walking around for sure. I even wanted to walk around with bear spray even. Yeah, so. that's kind of sad. But you couldn't keep it in your in your, in your vehicle. They don't want that. Here's the turn out to Randy's trap line. It's past. So we're making pretty good time here. Now I think the road is not so much washboard road anymore. Back up there, it was really bad, eh? Hmm. Still haven't seen any grubs. <coughs> saw a coyote and a fox on the way up, that was nice. Yeah. Both looked really good. I don't see a grouse and I have to take a video of you. I'm sure they went yeah. there. Yeah. <laughs> beat up old single said, shot shotgun. So my shells are packed away, long, hard to get. It would take me a while to get them out. I've got some handy over here. <laughs> 
minute I'll hang it in my uh, double barrel. <laughs> <laughs> Season's still open for growth, eh? I got my, I got a license. I got my license still. So boy, upland game, you know what I get upland now? bird. Once I turn 65, you get it for free. Yeah, I with your, for free. I know that's what my uncle told me because he, when he got it, yeah. he said, well, when you get your white tail license, he said make sure you ask for your upland game. Yeah. <laughs> and I, so I did. Bear license, yeah. Well, I'm not quite there. I'm a little. I'm nine years away from that. But he's 80, so he's been getting. He probably hasn't been paying for an upland bird. <laughs> well, I'm not sure. <laughs> when they started doing that. Maybe it was recently too. No. Well, yeah. <laughs> but I thought that's, I, I really, I thought that was a really nice nice, gesture. nice bonus, eh? Why don't think you need when you're 60? That's a bonus, but just a gesture of respect or uh -huh. taking care of the people, eh? Like, like, well, old age, people in their retirement, people, you'd like to see them get out and uh, be sure. active, right? I believe 60, I believe, you know, maybe you know this for sure, you don't need a fishing license when you're 65 either. Oh, uh, I'd be a fisherman, I wouldn't know that. Yeah, no, it's, uh, that's fishing true. licenses, are, if you're 65 and older, they just give them to oh. you. So, okay. And under under 16 or under 18, I think it's under 16, you don't need one either. For oh. fishing, I think. I don't know. I'll look that up sometime, yeah. But, that would be nice. Yeah, but that, uh, that's, yeah, that's really good encouragement for people. You know, you work hard, you put into society all your life. Like, uh, when you... 65 and then not making as much money anymore the government uh, should give you a little bit of slack eh? boys I, down I like uh, I like what Clarence said one time when when Clarence our friend Clarence had said about they offer they asked him if he, they offered him a, a, a seniors discount and he yeah. said you know what I don't need one now I needed a discount when I was 20 and I had a baby in the house and my wife staying home full time and I was working six days a week. Yeah. I needed a discount. He said, now I worked a long time. I saved a lot. I worked hard. And yeah. <laughs> had a good job. My house was paid for. I don't need a discount yeah, yeah. anymore. But then not everybody is like him either. Right? Their old days. No, true enough. They haven't saved up uh, much for the retirement. <laughs> true enough, eh? And they're living off just their very low CPP payments. And yeah, no. the price of things is going up and up and up. Crazy prices. Yeah, like inflation is killing. I, I bet you won't see the CPP go up to, to, to uh, no. offset that. No, it won't. So this gets harder and harder. Wages at least will go up gently a little bit. As inflation increases. But, uh, yeah, I, remember, I remember buying a loaf of bread. It was called... It was called peasant bread and it was four bucks a loaf. <laughs> I was laughing. <laughs> I don't imagine many poor people are buying this bread or, or I will be poor if I buy too many of this. <laughs> I will be a peasant if I keep buying this bread <laughs> for four bucks a loaf. <laughs> but no, just the other day even I carried 80 bucks worth of groceries in on one trip. <laughs> two bags, that's not, that's kind of disappointing. <laughs> yeah. Well, that's where it's nice having a freezer full of moose meat. But, uh, <laughs> the meat prices went up a lot too. From what yes. I hear. Oh yeah. you need likely that's where you can get your tannerite put yeah. some in and shoot it yeah. and fill it because that'd be fun <laughs> yeah as long as the door doesn't fly off and touch it on the well you, you shouldn't be standing too close to it when you oh, shoot it i think it says i think they recommend 100 yards away yeah yeah <laughs> so oh yeah at high velocity it'll cut you right in half oh 
way that that would be. Yeah, not good. That's a video for the, the channel for uh, Logan Tech. Right? Oh, yeah? Did you see any of those? I don't think I saw that. No. They're actually pretty, pretty fun. So they, when you get with uh, all the kids. The for sure. Kids. They would like to do that. Yeah. You know, at first, they're all they're out, uh, either out at the farm and stuff. They're all running around with a bunch of yahoos and can control them or nothing. You know, uh, doing stupid things and stuff. <laughs> Having fun, but, you know, just totally out of control. <laughs> and then they, uh, they say, okay, we're going to blow up some stuff. They say, what? <laughs> yeah, we're going to blow up stuff. But you have to sit here and not move from this spot. You have to all line up here and blah blah blah, you know. And you should see the discipline that comes in because they want to see this now, eh? Well, yeah. And this is serious. Yeah, blowing up stuff is fun when you're a kid. Yeah, well, it's like, fun when you're grown up. You mean you're gonna, you mean you're gonna blow something up? Says, yeah, uh, they can't believe that. Yeah, yeah. It's like, <laughs> okay, because uh, I will do basically, basically is I will do whatever you tell me to do just so I can see. Yeah. This. <laughs> <laughs> Total change in their demeanor right now, eh? And uh, when you take the shot and blow the thing up, they're just like, just, uh, they really enjoy that. That's, yeah. yeah. So this may be why there's so many graders on this road. Look, here comes yeah. another truck coming against yeah. us. So. Yeah, they got to keep it uh, cheap for these guys. So they do want to keep, keep it room. in good shape. Not, not a huge amount of traffic. So I'm wondering, so you could tell me this. I was wondering about Tannerite, if a, if a 22 would blow it up or do you need to use a more no. powerful rifle? Yeah, 22 it, won't That's what I thought. I thought so, so it's it's the velocity. So 22 is not going <laughs> to, yeah. that's not going to do it. Okay. So, uh, Just checking. What they say is you have to have 2,000 feet. All right. Velocity. Okay. 22 is usually around 1200, 1100, 1200 feet per mm -hmm. second. But uh, when they say 2000 feet for minimum, I know that that's not true because my uh, 45120 Buffalo rifle, my uh, reloads, uh, I measure them on the uh, on chronograph, they're 1600 feet per second. And they still work, eh? They blow that stuff up just like nothing. Oh, okay. I guess it has to the instructions it should work. But it does. I have to use the 308 for that, eh? Yeah, yeah. Okay. 308 would be no problem. Well, yeah. 3030. Maybe it's because with that 45120, the bullet is something big too, and it's 535 grains. Well, that's big, yeah. yeah. <laughs> that's a big grain. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, what you gotta see is that video I made. Uh, you know, like if you're trapping coyotes, you wanna uh -huh. have big, uh, yeah. alpha. And somebody mentioned to me one time, said, yeah, the ideal is to sprinkle bait all over this air, the area where you're setting your stairs and tuck it under logs and all over the place so that they have to work. You know, just like you see dogs do it. They just go sniffing around and looking, sniffing in the snow, trying to find little tidbits, eh? And uh, then they spend a lot of time in that area and they catch them in the snare pretty easy. So, so huh. I thought, well, I had these, uh, I don't know if you know the guy, uh, I forget his name, uh, Dominique. He had a freezer go yeah. out of commission on him. So, he oh, says, yeah. Don, you want all these turkeys? <laughs> he had like five turkeys and a bunch of big, Slabs of uh, ribs and all kinds of stuff. So, I said, yeah, I'll use them for bait. But then I thought, why don't I take one of those turkeys and set it up in the bush where I'm going to set snares? And I'll take a, a bottle, a container of tanner, and I'll shove it right up inside its cavity, <laughs> set it on a log, and blow that sucker up. <laughs> <laughs> so Spring, I took a, made a video of that. <laughs> Sprinkle that bead everywhere. <laughs> yeah, it, it, it did work. Like Save some was, time. It was little pieces of bead <laughs> for about a 50, uh, 50 foot, <laughs> half, uh, good 100 foot at least, <laughs> uh, radius. And all over the place, hanging from the trees. <laughs> oh no. <laughs> so 
pieces came flying right back at me. You know, like. <laughs> Good thing you had your mouth shut. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah. So that was, yeah. That's a real good way of spreading uh, bait. Yeah, that's a good... That's good. <laughs> Efficient anyway, you can save some time. Yeah. And then some of the other tur the other turkeys, then I built a board with a bunch of upright spikes on it. Like real long, one foot long spikes. Found it to the... Facing up to a 2x6 or 2x8. And then I pegged the, all the... Four, four turkeys have pegged on those things, set them up on a stand, all, all in line with each other. And then I took the 45 on and then shot at them in line to see how many tur frozen turkeys I could <laughs> penetrate. <laughs> that, was, that was fun too. Yeah, yeah, I saw that video. I saw that. Oh, okay. I remember seeing some of the comments and people thought it was a waste and then you had yeah, to explain. A, yeah. Sort of had to explain, sorry, no, we're not wasting. Yeah, not. This it's isn't edible. Meat, this isn't yeah. <laughs> This isn't edible meat. Yeah, it's not <laughs> edible. No. People, yeah. <laughs> starving kids in Biafra aren't going without their turkey dinner. <laughs> <That's right. laughs> because they of this were, video. They wouldn't like this. It's not, this isn't, yeah. yeah. Not even graded. We can't even use this for dog food, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that, uh, once a freezer uh, as long as you lose everything, eh? That's oh, why there's one good yeah. trick for, uh, that everybody should do. You should use a freezer and has a lot of stuff in there. Like, you know, with us, we've got a whole moose in there and gear and stuff. Let's say your freezer, freezer comes unplugged or just goes to put. And you find out one day that it's, oh, the freezer went off. Okay? Now, you're wondering what... What about the meat? You know, how long has it been uh, unplugged or kaput? And you don't know, uh, like, if your meat did it unthaw or or what? Is it spoiled? Do I have to throw everything away? There's a way to get around that really easy and cheap. What you do is you take uh, a glass and fill it with water, and then you freeze that water, put it in a freezer, and freeze it in the glass. So now you got a little skating rink on the top of it. Yeah. Then you take a coin, like a loony or something like that, and you place it on top of that little skating rink you put it on the, in the glass. Maybe pour a little bit more water just to hold it on and freeze that coin in place on the top of that skating rink. Yeah. Then you take that glass and you put that in your freezer somewhere. So that if, you're, if that ever happens to you, you're not sure whether you have to throw away the meat or not, or how long it's, the things have thought out. You just take that glass, and if that coin is now sitting at the bottom of the glass, yeah. it's been off for quite a while. Oh, yeah. Yeah. But if it's still frozen on the top, or sitting on the top, then yeah, it's only been off for a few hours. Eh? It costs nothing to do, except for a loony. Yeah, when they had the fire in Slave Lake, they were telling people, don't even open your freezer. Here's the here's the ropes, tie it up, put it out front. Oh. The fridge end, because it was gone, stuff was no power for two weeks or whatever, yeah, right yeah, at a time, yeah, right? Yeah, that stuff is they said, don't even open gone. it. They are telling, don't, don't open it. Don't even bother. You're, you're not, you'll not get that smell out of your nose. <laughs> <laughs> It'll be a long time losing that memory. <laughs> yeah. yeah they, so for the people, were, I guess, who had generators, and I suppose. I, I went up to Slave Lake after the fire and it was pretty incredible. There was, there'd be one house that would be wrecked and the next house next door absolutely nothing but totally unscathed. Oh. Uh -huh. Or there would be like one place had, the house was burnt, just nothing, nothing left. And uh -huh. then the playhouse, which was still in the yard, was still standing fine, which is like, if you've ever been around a big fire, there's a lot of heat generated. If you can be a long ways from the fire oh, yeah. before you feel the heat. Yeah. So, yeah, I mean, long ways, and you can feel the heat. You're not even close to the fire. So I'm not sure how.
You guys watching when Ed March does this, he's got a CT90 Adventures, it's called, and uh, he, so he's on a, on a Honda 90 and he's gone all over the world for the last, in the winter time, all over the place. Even Kananaskis, he's even in Banff and stuff, and all through Egypt and stuff, and the United Kingdom, on this 90cc motorcycle, but the last video I watched from him, it was, whatever, it was 45 minutes long. Uh -huh. So that was, or 55. Like this one here, I think it's like an hour and a half to drive out. Yeah. His, his last video was 55 minutes, but he said that took him four months to edit. Oh, yeah. That was four Let's months even, of, Well, we're filming this here too. Four months of editing. I don't think there's anything that we said <laughs> no. that I have to edit out. No. Because when you're editing, then it's an hour and a half video. You've got to look for those little places, that's going to take yeah. three hours. For sure, right? I didn't know how to turn the camera on myself when you drove away, when I filmed you driving away, but I was going to say, well, here I am. <laughs> how, how am I going to do? How am I going to do? With, I got a camera, but that's about it. <laughs> Maybe we should have talked politics. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. so, yeah. Here I am. <laughs> He'll come back for his camera, but. <laughs> I kept my mouth shut. Like, like I told Gladys the other day, there was this uh, guy who uh, was, went to a, psych, uh, a doctor, a psychiatrist, because his wife was losing. He says, Doctor, does my wife loses her temper? Those crazy, he says, it's, it's really starting to worry me, it's, it's scary in fact, he says, is there anything you can suggest for me to, to do? And the doctor says, yeah, he says, you, um, what you do is when she starts getting mad, you take a glass of water, and you take a little sip, and don't swallow it, just swish that water around in your mouth, back and forth, and just keep swishing it, and swishing it, and, uh, and don't, don't, don't swallow it, you know, and just keep on swishing it until either she settles down or she leaves, you know. He says, try that, and he says, uh, that'll probably fix things up. So the guy comes back a couple of weeks later, and he says, man, Tom, he says, that worked like a charm. He says, it's like, I, I can't believe, uh, like, how, how can that work, just swishing water around in your mouth? Got nothing to do with that, he says. It's just you're keeping your mouth shut. <laughs> that's probably a lot of it, eh? Oh, and sure, for sure, definitely. Not that we keep our mouths shut, but <laughs> hey, for those, <laughs> maybe it works for some people. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I just at work this last time, there was a guy there who he was all sad because it's his wife hadn't talked to him for, for two months. He hadn't said a word. He's gonna leave her. I think I gotta leave her. And I said, I don't know, you better think about that. A woman like that kind of hard to find. Uh, <laughs> well, no, you know, sometimes then you, with a joke like that, then, then they had a little argument one time. I said, just a second, I'm gonna go grab a glass of water. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Perfect. It kind of breaks the tension yeah, a little bit. Yeah, if she knows the joke, yeah, then that's good. Wait a minute. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Quick, I need a glass of water. <laughs> I'll be good. Or if we drink a beer, I'll just take a sip of beer and start swishing it around in my mouth. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'll be good. Well, and in truth, sometimes you do have to just it's, let a woman talk. We have to, oh yeah. I, it's actually a very, uh, something that I, it took me many years to learn. They don't like being constantly interrupted and overtalked. Yeah. And then they feel like they never get they're never understood or heard out. Right. Even though you may not disagree at all with what they're saying. Right? Why not let them talk? If it's something that's that you think is you don't think is right. It's supposed to be one of the It doesn't hurt to uh, let somebody get it off their chest and then when they're done. I and, think it's uh, they feel better. That's one of the things about 
that I've heard of the inherent difference between men and women is the guys will find you a solution. We'll give you a solution. Yeah, but women right. just they just want to talk about they it. They they're talk. not really interested in no. in, in, in re resolution or solving this. Just, <laughs> I just right. want to I just want to just. Yeah, share how I feel about this. I, I'm not actually looking for a solution. Have to make sense. <laughs> yeah, right? What are you doing? And so that makes sense. <laughs> trying to find a solution makes sense of it. That's figuring out what, how we can solve why, this problem. Yeah. yeah. That's why you, talk. it's good to check sometimes. You check, okay, do you want. Do you just want me to listen, or yeah. do you want a solution? Yeah. Like, what? How do you want this? Like, yeah. how we can just listen? Do you want some advice, or do you want just me to listen? Because yeah. if you just want to, just want me to listen, I can do that. Yeah. Yeah. So, yeah. Yeah. yes, there's a, there is an old one of them old. I don't know what they're called. Not adage. Uh, what's a, a, a witticism? Is that right? Is that the right term? No. I don't know. Anyway, one of these wise axioms or wise sayings. Where there once was a man who, who let his wife just let her vent, and then when we were done, they just had sex after. <laughs> he kept his mouth shut, let her vent, and then they had. Sex. <laughs> Now you see, so. now you went and did it, I have to now edit that out. Made work for me. No. YouTube probably won't let, like, well, I'm not sure if they, yeah, I don't. No, they don't like the words. Either, no. Either, so. So, no, you can't say that. Thanks no. a lot, Dave. But. <laughs> no, that's just to keep that within the. Yeah, you see, so you have to say things like, oh, instead of. We that, can't say that in our, in you our have video. To say, oh, uh, right. bedroom fun or something right. like that. So, a, so that the children don't understand what you're talking about. So the wise man was going to argue. Let, just once let his wife vent and then and when she was done, then they got into it. Then they, then they, they liked it. it. Yeah. They did things that they liked <laughs> with each other. Then they both had they, then they both went to bed happy. Yeah, then, they both, then they both slept for a while. <laughs> It earlier. Yeah, yeah. Got it on still? <laughs> no. <laughs> okay. I might have just put it in the back of the truck. It's really hard to try to remember to not forget something. Eh? more Tuesday when we're coming up. Yeah. Oh, you see, the thing is now that we're filming, of course, I'm going to see you. It's just an iron law of nature. <coughs> but nowadays, people have video cameras running all the time, man. Eh? Yeah. Oh yeah, when you get like a, a like a dash cam, something running across the road in front of you, you have to you can't plan that. Yeah. You never know something like that could happen. Lots of moose around here. Mm -hmm. Deer. Up here, we always see a few grouse. Uh, uh -huh. I haven't seen any going in or 
brand new uh, tires on the truck. Might have been the, the difference, the eh? Between getting stuck and getting out. Yeah. There you go. Yeah, yeah. Really so close to our traction limits. And I wasn't planning on going right away. I'm going to the trap line, but I knew we were going to pull up there soon. And I've been watching the uh, weather forecast. This depth. But, but I was watching those so. those forecasts for quite a while, and then I'm thinking, okay, I better get some new tires. Does she like that or not? Does she like that or is she gonna say, well, I wish you would have let me know I would have got something for supper. I was just gonna yeah, have yeah, yeah. I was just gonna have a well, sandwich for supper. The coin, right? She yeah, could say I was just gonna have a sandwich. Now you're here. Well I don't know here. Here have make a sand here's a sandwich. <laughs> I'll make you a sandwich quick, I hope you don't mind. Could be home by about five o'clock, eh? Well then that gives her enough time. <laughs> so that 
kind of gives her enough time to adjust plans for supper. Right, that's true. <laughs> She's got to be quick on her feet. She's got to be flexible. <laughs> it would be kind of funny just to roll up. Yeah, hi there. <laughs> and I mean, it's not to feel bad about that we plan to go for three days. Well, we for two. But I mean, we just, uh, we can't. Plants have to stay fluid depending on what the Whoa. conditions are, right? Yeah. But she's pretty good yogurt, so... You want to have supper with us? I don't know. Not, I'm okay. You're welcome to stay. You can sit around and yes. Tell her all our stories, all our lies. But yeah, she's been bugging me to uh, get a skidoo. Well, good. But the thing is, they're not cheap, so I've just been kind of nope. resisting. No, right? You can pay as much as you want for them. Yeah, I know I know we're going to get one. Yeah. I just hate to spend all that money. <laughs> okay, the good, the good used one is probably going to be 5000 bucks anyway. Yeah. A reliable one, right? Like, yeah. Twelve or fifteen. I think like Skidoo Expedition or something like that or etc. How much is they? Seventeen. Seventeen. Oh, that much, eh? Yeah, I think so. You'd buy another Harley for that price. Yeah, that's <laughs> the price of Harleys. <laughs> Seventeen thousand. I bought the quad used. That I got for a little over five. Uh huh. But, uh, but uh, Skidoo. Gladys doesn't like to buy used. Right. That's my first instinct. No, no, they're that expensive new, let's get a used one. But she has a hard set on the new one. And we could do it. And there are some upsides to getting new too. Eh? Some. Okay, some. <laughs> because you don't never know what somebody's done with that. that used well, yeah. Okay? Hey. How they've abused it or what, what's going on with it. Yeah, and I think skidoos are mostly, I think more people use them for recreation, and I think they probably bag them. I think they probably ride them pretty hard. Yeah, they see they some heavy, some heavy them. service. They're yeah. flat out trying to see what they can do, how fast they can do this or yeah, whatever, yeah, right? Yeah, don't, don't really give so. a rip, eh? It's a little bit like that with some Harleys, too. Right? Yeah, oh no, for sure. People just ride the crap out of them, and then they just plan to buy a new one every three years or whatever, anyways. Oh, yeah. You see that sometimes people will say that on a forum. Sometimes they'll say, "I've seen." That. Well, I go through, I go through three tires a season, but I'm just that rough on them, or that's just how what I like. like oh, yeah. yeah, I mean, you go. <laughs> this means you do a lot yeah. of burnouts if you put. <laughs> Whereas the way we use skidoo, it's not going to be like right. You're not going to stunts and stuff. <laughs> we just want some. Don't want to wreck it. Yeah. Be easy on the equipment. Well, then for sure you're looking for a four-stroke, not a two-stroke skidoo then, right? Yeah. You want a four-stroke. They're heavier, right, but way more reliable and stuff like that. Uh -huh. And probably bad and better for low RPM, right? Because yeah. you know how a two-stroke motor works, right? Like, like on your chainsaw, right? It's gotta, you got to keep the revs up all the time, right? Like, they don't, they don't, you got to come. Yeah. Making that ring, ding, ding, ding sound. Yeah. <laughs> oh, Messages coming in. I sent the... I sent a message last night on the Garmin and Reach device, uh, but I didn't get any response back, so I'm not sure that it seems to me if you reply to the mess uh, the email that you get from the Garmin uh, device, that you should be able to get a reply to it too. You didn't get a response back. No, no, but then I did send it late last night. Eh? Hmm. And then inside the cabin, uh, it, does, it doesn't connect to the uh, satellite anyways inside the cabin. I have to go outside. Yeah. But I never did check it in the morning. Actually. It seems to me that if you're going to use a satellite phone device, then you should be able to have two-way communication. Eh? It's quite nice because it's a, a little handheld unit, not a not a box, it's a size like yeah, 10 inch by 12 small. inch box by 10 inch high. Yeah. <laughs> Wooden box that you gotta... <laughs> it's got the little carabiner yeah, but with the, yeah. on it so you can just attach it onto your belt or whatever on the sure. machine. Yeah. It looks like it's pretty weatherproof, maybe waterproof. Sure. 
sure. Shockproof and water resistant, no doubt, for yeah. the very um, least, right? Oh yeah, yeah. At the very least. Tell the way it's made that it's at least water resistant. So yeah, it's not. You don't have to worry about being in rain and stuff with it. But, you know, stuff like that costs money too, right? Ideally, but uh, right? one time might make a difference in life and death, even. Yeah. yeah. Somebody has a stroke out there, you know, we're getting on an inch, a heart attack or something. You need medical assistance right now. They do have a trapper's rescue system oh, yeah. huh. around here. Eh? The Grandy is actually uh, involved in that. He works in that. They go out uh, a few, couple of times a year, I think, to rescue trappers that are, something's happened to them. They didn't show up, they didn't come back, you know, and then they send out a search party to find them. <laughs> might find them dead, might find them just in real bad shape. They told me one time they found the guy, and he's an old fella, and, he's, and they found him in his cabin, eh? But I think he had a stroke or something like that, and he couldn't move, couldn't do anything. They're stuck in this cabin, so if they hadn't gone out and uh, looked for him and found him, he would have died. Huh. There's another guy that the Alberta Trappers Association recently uh, raised a whole pile of money for to get him a prosthetic leg. Old time trapper. He, if I recall the story right, he was. Uh, He's doing his trap line, checking his traps, and uh, I think he crashed with his skidoo and it fell out of the or something like that, and, and pinned him under the machine. And he couldn't get out. I think it broke his leg maybe too at the same time. But anyways, he was stuck under that machine. And they, I, I still find it hard to believe. I think they said it was over a week. He was wow. under that machine. Huh. And uh, until this, they finally came out and found him in that day. And he was still alive and he's still alive today. That was many years ago. But they had to cut his leg off, eh? Yeah. Or both his legs. Eh? Wow. But imagine being in that, hmm. that kind of situation. Knowing you're just gonna... In the winter. Waste away, I'm just gonna die yeah. here. <laughs> the guy survived. Yeah. Like, oh, That's pretty man. amazing. That's pretty... That's something. Yeah, through the nights and the days and days. Yeah. The hopelessness of it, eh? Yeah. That's why it's a uh, good thing, like, you can, I'd like to have the idea of you coming with me or somebody with me. It's not, a, it's not the greatest thing to go by yourself. It's not too long. Plus, if a cougar attacks, or a bear, you know. Then I know, uh, but you always keep in mind that they tend to go for the smallest prey. Since yeah. I'm quite a bit bigger than you. And it's and it looks like <laughs> the easy target for sure. You out. A little oh. bit of an easier target. Yeah, yeah. I'll have the hand you know, so I'll, I can <laughs> dispatch them, but you might get a little bit of mauling, right? Might have a bit of a trouble. But it's good that they don't go after me first. You know? I had a knife, but I didn't have it on. I read <laughs> it in the cabin. <laughs> the old joke is always, you know, go with somebody who runs slower than you. Exactly. But I always say, go with somebody who's smaller than you. Yeah, they can. Like any, uh, go any for predatory the, animal. Look for the weakest. For the easiest. These, of course. Yeah. Well, well, no, that makes sense. I'll take that one. That makes that, sense. That's why when I'm with Gladys, like, I mean, carrying a gun is, is more, more for her. And everybody always says that, oh yeah, but you, you can't stop an animal in time with a handgun. They don't have That's to. always what they say. It, it happens too fast. But none of them ever consider the, the scenario of you being with somebody else. Right. And that, that is also a purpose of, uh, of the gun. It's, they're, they're attacking somebody 
else. They can't be attacked with both of you at the same time. So you have time if you're the one not under attack yeah. to dispatch that animal before he maybe kills that person. Mm -hmm. And then you you don't have to fire it that quick necessarily and all that kind of stuff. You want to get an endorsement? You want to get endorsement well, or? Well, they're not actually Sorrells. Oh. I don't think. Oh, okay. <laughs> yeah. Let's <laughs> look up what's the brand name. I've got a TV mark. Say this again. <laughs> You're never going to get sponsorships by yeah, saying they're yeah, too exactly. tight. They didn't really well, work no, all that good. They are Sorrells. Yeah. <laughs> they work great. It's they're weird. comfortable, it's warm. What else? Would I have matching garments. Easy to walk on. Yeah. <laughs> Easy for hiking. They work yeah. very well. Yeah. These are the finest pairs of boots yeah, I've ever worn. worn. Before, but they're great. The quality is fantastic. Yeah. <laughs> well, well worth the money. Yeah. Well, it actually sort of along the same lines when we, when we packed and come out. I, was, I made sure to pack the muck lugs, eh? Uh -huh. The side muck lugs. Because if, if we do decide to walk all the way back, because it's a pull of the sled to get stuff, no, my first thought was I wasn't going to pack everything up in the truck in case we can't come back. But right. I thought, well, if you we can't come back, then we're going to have to come back and pull on that, that big sled right. to haul stuff out by hand, eh? And then, then I want to have the buck lugs on. Huh. Where these Sorrells are nice, but they're heavy. Mm -hmm. They kind of slip on the foot a little bit. And you know, buck lugs are just like they're walking around in your socks, no weight on your feet. Yeah, but the branches don't feel good on the palms and the soles of your feet. Uh, I got the... Uh, branches oh, and rocks don't feel film. so good. The thick felt liners. Uh, well, they got the, the liners would help then. Well, that they would, got... That would work. Let us make some pads. <laughs> okay. Yeah. So, yeah, we just bought some felt liners and cut them to shape. Yeah. So now we're getting close to that uh, four-way stop, you remember that? Oh, okay. So not too far from... Uh -huh. Oh boy. Yeah. Come with this truck and that truck all at the same time. Uh, yeah, I think when we, we should just surprise Gladys. <laughs> Yeah. In 
as far as I know, all you know how to bake is bacon and eggs. I mean, they were good. Yeah. So we can have bacon and eggs again for supper yeah, yeah. if she's not home. But. <laughs> but she might have some stew she can take out of the freezer. Yeah, exactly. Actually, I was a little bit surprised that my bacon and eggs turned out good. <laughs> if I don't say so myself. No, they were good. Yeah. They weren't burned on the bottom of the pan. My get, car is not there. Get to my house. <laughs> so how am I yeah. gonna get the cameras now? Yeah, yeah. I got no car. That's what his yeah. plan is. Yeah, he put on his light there for you. Yeah. That's so he's letting you. Yeah. Well, it's kind of a pullover area here. Maybe he's just pulling out the stuff too. Yeah, he is actually. Is he? Yeah. He's probably got to check his load before he gets to the highway. Because I think the highway is just getting right here. Okay, okay. we'll stop here for a little bit eh? and uh, we'll do some texting. Thank you.